Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bryce Smith of EFTforchristians.com. Uh, remember, if you have any um, psychological or medical emergencies, EFT is not a substitute for any type of medical or, or psychiatric advice or care, so please, please, please call your own personal physician. Um, today what I want to do um, quickly, I want to give you some more ideas of um, what to do with, how to use or what to do with EFT. I think this is um, this is something a lot of people don't even think about um, using it for, and that's kind of like first aidy things. You know, we um, we trip, we fall, we pinch our fingers, we burn our fingers, we do, you know, we walk into a, a wall or we hit our head on a closet door or all the goofy little things that we humans do, but we never think about using tapping for them. Um, and there's actually a really, really good scientific reason why you should be doing that. And again, it's just part of that mindfulness. You just have to go, oops, I just, you know, picked up a hot pan. That wasn't probably the best thing I could have done. And, and I, to be honest with you, I go for an ice cube and I tap. And that tends to, that's usually the end of it. I mean, you know, the finger will be sore for half an hour and then it's gone. And, and I never even think about it again for the next how many days and sometimes um, you know you touch an, a hot burner and you can get yourself a you know a pretty dandy uh, big old um, blister from it but what's going on is your body has this besides the fact you all know they has an innate capacity to heal but but how does that happen well what has happened is when you know we do something even if it's tiny small little thing like I said you know you walk into a corner of a wall and you bang your knee up or you or you trip down a stairs or something you actually set up a, 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 a although it's small but you set up a stress response within your system and anytime there's any kind of a stress response your body secretes all of those stress hormones including cortisol and again it's kind of a long roundabout way the cortisol is kind of the last one that gets secreted because you do norepinephrine and adrenaline first but you secrete the um, the cortisol and you run your cortisol up now often it isn't real long but if you have a sprained ankle you know you can it that can really mess up a couple days of your life you know especially if you have to you need to go somewhere and you're supposed to be walking and now it's got it all goofed up and you got to figure out how you're gonna get from here to there so what what's going on here is this there are two hormones, and cortisol is one of them. Cortisol is one hormone. There's a second one called DHEA, and I will, don't ask me what it is. It's dye, blah, blah, blah. It's some big old long chemical name. I just call it DHEA. Um, they're both made in the adrenal glands, and they're both made from the same precursor chemicals, which I find really interesting. So what happens here is that if your cortisol level is flying off the ceiling and it's way high, your DHEA level and your DHEA level is what heals and restores and rejuvenates cells is low because they both can't be up because there's only so much of the precursor chemical to make these hormones. So when the when cortisol's up, DHEA is down, and when DHEA is up, your cortisol's down. You, again, you can't have them up and down. It just isn't. Both of them can't be up and both of them can't be down. It's just not the way it doesn't work that way. So how, what, how does tapping impact that? Well, we know from those early studies that Dawson Church did that an hour of tapping will drop your cortisol level 24%. So what's happening when your cortisol level drops? Your DHEA level comes up. Again, what does the DHEA do? Does it restores, rejuvenates, it, it helps your cells to heal. So we obviously want lots and lots and lots of DHEA and a little, you know, lots and lots less of cortisol. So here's, here's what I do, you know, and I use this, I use this for like at the gym. I go to the gym and, you know, I'm doing my stuff and then all of a sudden I pinch my blooming finger in the middle of two nice pieces of steel equipment and it hurts like crazy and I'm kind of yammering to myself because, you know, it just interrupted what was going on. And I can see the bruise rising and I'm like, oh, cripe, here we go. And it, usually it hurts like crazy. So what do I do? I just stop. I don't care who's looking. I honestly don't anymore. I'm like, you know what? I know something you don't know. And if you want to learn it, come over here and ask me what I'm doing. I just start tapping, even though I just pinched my finger and I feel like an idiot. 
and it hurts like the like crazy I know that God loves me and therefore I love and accept myself just the way I am and I'll set it up and I'll tap it hurts like crazy it hurts like crazy now I'm gonna have this big old bruise on my finger and it's gonna swell up and you know it's gonna be a mess and now I won't be able to come to the gym for three days and then I have to put ice on it for two hours and I just kind of get a little crazy and you know talk kind of silly to myself and I do two or three rounds and I forget about it and by then uh, the cortisol you know the cortisol's dropped a little bit and the pain levels you've kicked up your endorphins and it doesn't really hurt so much anymore and in fact you know and we all know it's a pinch okay it, within a couple minutes it settles down anyway and I go on my merry way I finish my workout and lo and behold four hours later I look at my hand and it's like wow I don't even have a bruise or if I do it's this teeny teeny weeny itsy bitsy little bruise and that's it um, I'll do that I, I'll do the same thing I, I remember one time I was on my way walking to the gym and I wasn't paying attention I was probably praying or singing or you know looking at the birds or something on the trees and I fell off the sidewalk you know it wasn't hard but you know you all of a sudden your ankle rolls over and you're like ah oh, you know just what I need you know I'm, I'm gonna tap I says I'm an old lady and I don't need to sprain my ankle and you know geez I won't be able to walk for three days and so what did I do? And my ankle really hurt. I was like, ah, dang it. So what did I do? Same thing. I set it up. Even though this really makes me mad, I just wasn't paying attention. And I just fell off and rolled my ankle off the sidewalk. And now it's going to mess me up. And I won't be able to walk for three days. And I'm going to have to go home and find an ace bandage. And then I'm going to have to put ice on and put my foot up because it's going to swell up. You know, I know God loves me and therefore I love and accept myself. And I kind of go on and on, you know, being kind of mad at myself. But do it while you're tapping. Set it up of, oh, she's what did I do that for? And then I just tap. Now I'm not going to be able to walk. Now I'm not going to be able to walk. I'm going to have to go home. And now it's messed me up. And now I won't want to go for that hike with my friend tomorrow. And now I won't be able to go because I just rolled my ankle. What an idiot I am. And I just let myself say whatever I'm thinking or feeling. Tap three or four rounds. And I go on my merry way. And you know what? That's the end of it. It most often is the end of it. Um, you know, can I say it will be 100% of the time? No, but it often solves a lot of the problem. You just let your body, you know, say what you need to say, drop those neurochemicals, drop that cortisol, and just let your body take care of it. You've already yelled at yourself, get it over with, and then let, let God just heal your ankle. And it very often works. All right, I want to give you an example. Um, and again, my husband always lets me tell any of the stories about him I want to because he doesn't care. So, um, and if you ever meet him, you can ask him that. Um, a year or so ago, he broke his arm. He tripped over a hose in the front yard and, and he busted um, just below his elbow on his lower arm. And he went to the doctor. I wasn't home and that was, he was pretty upset about that. Um, but he went to the doctor and he had x-rays done. and frankly they couldn't tell from the x-ray what exactly he had broken or how badly he had broken it so the doc sent him to get an MRI because they wanted to be sure that that arm you know he didn't break the elbow or bust it into a bunch of pieces so that he would have to have that thing pinned so they did that but of course it you know it always takes four or five days to get those MRI results back and in between that time he had we had an out-of-town show a gig to do so we went and did that and I and he had one of those full blow-up rubber casty things on it and so he was kind of like incapacitated a little bit couldn't drive and whatever but and I know that annoyed him um, and so toward the end of the weekend when I knew that Monday afternoon when we got home we would go to that doctor and that doctor was going to tell us whether surgery was imminent or wasn't I sat down and I said, talked to him I said Brad okay we've got a tap about this arm so What's going on and what do you feel? Well, I knew what, I'm pretty sure what he felt. So we just, I started where it starts. And so the first thing he says to me, I, I said, well, how do you feel about the accident? Well, I feel like an idiot. Okay, so, and you got to remember, we're 65 years old. So when we were kids, this is language we talk, you know, we just said you're an idiot. So please don't take that as in politically incorrect, but it's just the way. So we talked. So I, we set it up and we tapped on. I feel like an idiot. I'm so embarrassed. I hope nobody saw me trip. You know all kinds of little odds and ends of things that were that he was thinking about you know 
uh, it, would, it was bothering me. You know, now it's going to mess up my, I can't work in the basement. I can't get my jobs done. I have all these things I want to finish, all my projects. I won't be able to do them because I have this arm. I can't lose. And they put it, you know, and then it was, I hate surgery. I'm scared, blah, blah, blah. And on and on we went, you know, it's going to be broken and now this and that. And it was the most interesting thing that I've had happen in a long time. The second because finally I said, are you done? I mean, anything else? Because I mean, we'll tap as long as we need to. Nope, I'm done. That's I saw how you feel. He said, I feel great. And at that second, it was the most amazing thing the Holy Spirit did. It was like, whoosh. And it, I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew there was nothing wrong with his elbow. Now, what was really going on there? What was really going on there? I'll give you the conclusion of the story. We went the next afternoon back to the orthopedic surgeon and his words were, I am, I am so glad I had you do that MRI. It was just a shadow on that x-ray. It's a clean break. Leave that plastic rubber blow up cast on your arm for three weeks and we're done. You know, we'll just check it again, but it'll heal and don't need surgery. And it was like, wow, isn't that amazing? But what's going on here? Did the tapping cure his arm? I don't want to say the tapping cured his arm because first off, God's the only one that can cure anything. God's our healer. We don't, it has nothing to do with us. We do the process. That's all that's going on. But what was going on here? I think, and this is just me thinking because I'm always have to analyze everything. What's the possibility that once we got all of Brad's you know, I'm so scared. I'm so embarrassed. I feel like an idiot. I hate surgery, you know, and this is an inconvenience to me and got all of that stuff tapped out and neutralized that retrospectively his DHEA came up and healed that arm. We know, we know now, and there's a ton of studies that they've done this on and it blows my mind that they've had, they've checked things where people have been prayed for today but the event happened in the past and the prayers influenced the past isn't that amazing so i just think we serve an amazing god i just think we serve an amazing god and i think this is a tool you all can use just be mindful and aware of what's going on just you know use it use it for everything just give it a try you're not out much you can still always go to the doctor if it doesn't work but try it. You just never know what healing modalities and, and tricks that God's got up his sleeve. Um, I want to, um, now, now from here on, this is getting a little scientific. So if this, you know, you're not interested in some of quantum physics, just turn this thing off because I'm going to go after something here. There's another something else going on here. And I, this is, if y'all are interested in um, some principles of quantum physics because quantum physics and quantum mechanics is actually influencing um, what goes on in EFT. Um, there's a principle called the uncertainty principle and it was part of what they call wave function collapse and it was found out by a guy named Heisenberg, I don't know what his first name was, back in 1927 and what and they've repeated this experiment like ad nauseum now but what they have found out that you know, there's like a gazillion possibilities to stuff until it is observed. And once that, once that whatever's going on is observed, all of the other, all the possibilities except one collapse. Now think about that for a little bit. I know it sounds, it might sound a little bit confusing, but so what's happening is observers, as particular humans, when we observe something, we change it. And I'm not so sure that we don't change it to what we expect it to be. And I think that's where we talk about in EFT um, that habits, we keep perpetuating our own bad habits because it's what we know and we never can think outside the box to change something. But when we tap, we open up those possibilities of change and that there is another you know, solution to whatever it is we're looking for. So, you know, we don't, aren't doomed forever. And this is based on neuroplasticity of your brain because the brain can change that we're not doomed to the same choices for the rest of our life. Isn't that amazing? And, and that's kind of scriptural because, you know, what, what do we say with God? Everything's possible. I can't give you the exact scriptural quote, but we know that to be true. Everything is possible with God and the faith of a mustard seed can change anything, you know, can move a mountain. 
So it's just kind of fun now to watch quantum mechanics, quantum physics, um, uh, you know, make show us that the scriptures are true, like we already knew that, but it just kind of continues to prove it. And then you, you know, out of that, you extrapolate some, some ways to use um, both quantum physics and the principles and, and the beauty of scripture and in your own life just to change teeny tiny pieces of it a little at a time.